Foot Clan, we are getting you prepared for free agency. We are a couple weeks away. Who are the big free agents, and where do we think they are going to land? Stay tuned and check it out. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I am your host today, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by my best friend of this Tuesday. I was wondering, see, usually when Andy is Jason Moore. absent, right. I'm your best friend on the show, and that's... De facto. It makes me, well, of course, it makes me feel so good to be a de facto best friend. But I wasn't sure today because Andy is not gone. Yes, Andy is in fact here. He has just his voice is completely gone. He sounds like a squeaky mouse when he attempts to say anything. So he's sitting the show out, but he said, "No, I will power through at least the sitting part." Yeah. So he is sitting here, and he will be enduring the show. I he's got his papers. He's going to be working on some things. <laughs> If you can check that out at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to see what we're having to do or endure here with Andy, but I am doing well, Jason, how are you doing? I, I'm doing great. And I would just like to say, you definitely want to check it out on YouTube. Not only is Andy ridiculous, um, and you'll want to see that. But in addition to that, we have, you know, now that it's March, right? Of course we have our 2019 highlight video that is up on youtube it's going to be awesome to see perfectly really, timed we're getting it together on such an important day well there's so many highlights to go through so many highlights it takes a while <laughs> it's it's an 82 minute uh extravaganza clip. uh and and we're we're launching it here on um your birthday that is Mike. correct i was gonna say on today's show we got buy or sell news and notes we're gonna go through some free agent preview and predictions because like we are about two weeks two weeks away from free agency and now is the time to be speculating to be dreaming to be salivating on what could possibly happen but it also happens to be my birthday happy birthday to me i'm also the host of today's show which means i get to do Whatever I want, Andy has to listen to it. Like, if we're going to talk about Tom Brady, we're going to talk about the plant man. We want to hear, like, the best drop I've ever made? Preseason power up. Yeah! It's not even preseason time, but I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I feel powered up. <laughs> so, we will start the show in just a moment, but. Like I said, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Find us on Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. All your fantasy football needs over there on IG. You can follow us. Andy is at Andy Holloway. Jason is at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. That is both Twitter and Instagram. Jason, are you ready to buy or sell? I am very prepared. <laughs> Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Today's Buy or Sell is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers will not be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Are we going to buy or sell? It has not been the best of times fantasy-wise for Aaron Rodgers as of late. QB 6 a couple years ago, QB 9 this last year. He used to average about 38 touchdowns a season. For the past two seasons, that number has plummeted to 25 and a half. Jason, what do you make of the perhaps demise of Aaron Rodgers and his fantasy value? Granted, Devontae Adams, his number one option, missed weeks five through eight this past year. Are you giving him a pass because of that? Uh, I'm not giving him a pass because of that. Ironically and, and, and weirdly, his numbers were better for fantasy in games that Devontae Adams missed, which was super weird because Devontae Adams was very efficient uh, himself. So the, the thing is, what you alluded to, right, 
I don't think this is the same Aaron Rodgers from 2011 to 2016. You had a six season uh, sample size where he was a 16 game pace of 38 touchdowns a year. He now was the, the man. He was the man. He either finished number one or number two every single year. Now the last couple of seasons, you drop down to 25, 26 touchdowns. That's not going to get it done for where you usually have to draft Aaron Rodgers. So this is a really interesting question. Do I buy that he will not finish as a top 10 quarterback? And I hate this line because in general, I feel like I'm out on Aaron Rodgers. I don't, right. I'm not, I'm not uh, I don't think he's going to bounce back to elite fantasy production at all. Um, he's, you know, less and less mobile at this age. Uh, you know, a couple hundred rushing yards uh, a year is, is harder to come by now. And the touchdown numbers aren't there. Obviously, with LaFleur, they're wanting to run the ball more. We saw that with Aaron Jones and his outlandish touchdown total. Say that there was that for Rodgers. There was just the very bizarre touchdown total, rushing touchdown total for Aaron Jones, which taking away the opportunity, Aaron Rodgers had, has always been a sensational uh, touchdown thrower inside mm. the red zone and inside the 10, more so than other quarterbacks. So are you – how are you factoring that in? Very eloquent. Well, so I think there are two two reasons here that I am going to sell him not being in the top 10, meaning I believe he will be a low-end top 10 quarterback, probably, you know, 9 or 10 next season for two reasons. One is the touchdowns that were so asininely run heavy, right. and I think that that will rebound back more towards his career average. The other reason is... You know, look, I know in the games that he didn't have Devontae Adams, he uh, performed well for fantasy. Those, you know, he had a couple monster games. But I don't believe that the wide receiver core around Devontae Adams is even decent. I, I You don't I, think they're going to address that? I do. And that's my point. My point is it has been atrocious. Jimmy Graham is legit your second best option, and he's atrocious. And he's gone. They, you know, there's already been rumors with them trying to get another tight end in. You know, they're kicking the tires on Austin Hooper, or rumored to be, since they can't kick the tires yet. Um, and I, I think they're going to bring in another pass catching weapon, which will benefit Rogers. So yes, I think he's going to be a top ten quarterback. I am probably not going to pay up for his name and his inconsistency. But where do you land on the buy or sell? So you are selling that. He will not be a top 10. Correct. I'm using the double <laughs> negative. I don't know why. Why did we phrase it he will not be? I look only to Brooks. Yeah. That's that, me. That's on you, Brooks. It would have been a much tougher decision had you said top five. Like I'm, I feel like I'm where, right where you are, Jay, where it's, I'd, I'm outish on Aaron Rodgers. But by the end of the year, if he plays a full year, he'll be a top 10 guy. He's not just going to completely fall out of there. He's a 4,000-yard guy. He'll have at least upper 20s in the touchdowns yeah. with the opportunity to be far more. So I will sell that he is not the top 10. <laughs> I mean, yes. like it's this, yes, we have no bananas. Exactly right. So that was buy or sell. Andy, I'm sure, was is buying that Aaron Rodgers will not be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. But we won't get into that right now. That was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS, and you're going to get a $10 credit towards your first purchase. Who's on the wall today, Brooks? We got, oh, DeAndre Hopkins. They signed DeAndre Hopkins jersey glowing on the wall. If you want something like that, go over to Pristine Auction. News and notes from around the league. Busy, busy week slash weekend for the NFL. The NFL Combine, the Underwear Olympics took place. A lot of a lot of dudes out there just running their hearts out, lifting the weights. You see the punter? Oh, the, doing the, the reps? The punter, <laughs> the punter just crushing the bench press? Yeah, that's how I want my punter. Uh, upper body strength <laughs> is one of the things I look for the most in a punter. Why is a punter even have doing to do the bench press? Right. What what GM in the history of the NFL has ever looked to the results of the bench press for the punter and made any kind of tiebreaker like I'm between these guys, but that guy That's had I mean. two what? more reps. Best case scenario for this guy who who crushed the bench press, 
I guess, is this, that we're talking about. I don't know his name. I'm not going to bother to look it up. Ah, no need. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Punter. Uh, very impressive what you did with the weights. But like, So that's best case. Worst case scenario is he hurts himself doing the bench press at the combine. Which, good odds. Good for the punter <laughs> to really hurt himself. Like uh, we're gonna, uh, I know you're going to be the running back. We're going to have you do some kicking drills. Just see how you uh, how you fare just in case. The Cincinnati, and we'll, we'll get into some more combine reactions. Michael but. Turk. Michael Turk? We don't now it was, respect I feel like he was ASU. Is that correct? Uh, or is that out of my oof. butt? I'm not going to look that up, <laughs> Mike. I looked up one <laughs> thing. One is enough. How dare you? All right. Well, you maybe looked that up. But before we get into our combine takeaways, the Cincinnati Inquirer. Inquirer. Inqu I sounded like the the one of the guys from the Wonder Pets. Inquirer. Oh, that's right. Or Mowage. Yeah. Let's brought us together. So anyway, some paper in Cincinnati, they're reporting the Bengals plan to franchise free agent A.J. Green. I like that we get to talk about A.J. Green right now when Andy is off mic. Oh, this is wonderful. He gets to be here for our besmirching and cannot stand up and defend A.J. Green, who he believes is the best free agent wide receiver in this draft or in this, in this class. Off season, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and it is incorrect. So you, you think – he will be back with the Bengals, yeah. You, but you think this is the incorrect move for the team? Um, a, a franchise is fine. I mean, you, I, I think a franchise tag is perfect because if AJ Green comes back strong, he's worth every cent of a franchise tag. He is a top five wide receiver in the NFL. Has been. Yes, I'm. Well, I'm saying if he comes back strong, okay. he is. Um, so he deserves the money. But this is nice because you don't want to give a guy at this age who just missed an entire season. A long-term deal that that just that's a way to have a bunch of dead cap in the future and how many games did he miss do you know off the top of your head the the season before oh no the i was like uh 16 okay so yeah year. so he played nine games in 2018 so yeah. it's yeah we'll we'll see i mean you're right if if he is back then he's well worth the money uh ESPN's Jenna Lane is reporting the Cowboys are expected to franchise tag Dak Prescott. That is not breaking news by any stretch. If you can't get him signed, you have to franchise tag him. It does have implications, though, for Amari Cooper because mm -hmm. now Amari Cooper will get to just go out to the world and start trying to get the most money possible if they can't get a deal worked out soon. The Chargers are expected to franchise tag tight end Hunter Henry. What are your reactions to that? Do you think that's actually going to happen? Yeah, I think it could. At the very least, they're threatening other teams to not look at it. Uh, you know, the Chargers don't really have uh, the one player on the roster that's like, man, they have to use this franchise tag on them. And since the Chargers are, let's just say, not the not in the upper echelon of well-run teams, I think that it's <laughs> – I mean, that's just true. I, I Every Charger that's fan still, knows there's that. There's still a wide margin, though. I'm trying to be kind. Okay. I'm trying to be nice, but they, they don't have a long history of just really being able to lock down their players. Um, I mean, look at Melvin Gordon and, and, and how that went. So uh, Hunter Henry is a talented tight end who will have a market. The franchise tag makes sense for his capabilities and the current uh, payment two tight ends, I, I, I think it would be a, a wise move for the Chargers to do that. Ian Rappaport says that Jameis Winston had off-season surgery for a torn meniscus, so fixed shoulder, new eyes. Jameis Winston, by the start of the season, will be a cyborg. I think the only thing that is left – is the is the brain transplant or <laughs> enhancement? Like you got um, three things. Get that him really, hooked up to the neural net. Exactly. You need to matrix some Peyton Manning into him because you needed the eyes as a quarterback. You need the shoulder, <laughs> right? And you got to have the brain. And so it's the last thing. Like they have to come out and do something. Like like he's taking the vitamins that help. The, you know, he's not uh, what like ginseng. Is that is that one of ginkgo the ginkgo biloba? Yeah, there it is. He's he he needs a sponsorship with a ginkgo, and then you know the world. I love oyster. biloba. <laughs> All right, so what are what are the biggest? Are we to combine takeaways? Uh, well, the, the one there's a couple more things I wanted to mention before we do that. There are trade rumors abound from Dan Graziano and Jeremy Fowler. They're saying 
The Jags, in fact, want to trade Nick Foles because they have Minshew mania. They want to move forward with Gardner as the quarterback. Good luck. Yeah, I mean... Good luck trading Nick Foles on the, the contract. You didn't have to give him that contract. Remember when they signed him? Yes. And people were like, why did you give him a so contract that nobody else was bidding on him? And they're like, well, we wanted him to come in feeling like a star quarterback. It's like, that's just so stupid. And look, the Jets want to trade Le'Veon Bell. Ain't going to happen. They want to trade Nick Foles. Ain't going to happen. When you have a bad con, everybody wants to trade the bad decisions they've made. <laughs> like no one else in the I league. I too would like to get rid of my bad decisions. Can see what happened. And just to follow up, because I, I feel like we were talking about Brandon Cooks a, a lot recently and saying how, like, well, he's locked and loaded because his contract situation is going to be there. The Athletics' Rich Hammond is saying the Rams may ask him to restructure his contract. Maybe. And that could just be as simple as moving some money around. He still makes the same, but it at least has to raise the question of do the do the Rams still value Brandon Cooks at the contract he was on a couple years ago? No, I mean, no, of course not. They don't. In this, I mean, when you have a guy paid as your best wide receiver and he's on the field sixty percent of the time and, and right. fewer for half the season, that's. Those two things don't match. Um, so, yeah, a restructure. I'm sure they would hope for a pay cut, but I doubt Brandon Cooks agrees. On to the combine. Just quickly, Jay, do we have a few takeaways here that, I mean, besides, obviously, the, the punter tearing uh, it up? I mean, that's the main one, um, for that's sure. That's what I took. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I've, I've said it before. I always love watching the running back receiving drills. Um, it, it's really nice. It was nice to see Jonathan. Any standouts? Cam Akers, to, okay. to me, was the guy that really uh, caught my eye as someone that I don't think has been talked about in the upper echelon. I mean, he, you know, he's got a, he's right. got a good name, good history, but, um, you know, you, you've kind of got a big three. Um, and Jonathan Taylor, one of those uh, big names, Certainly just looked so outstanding. It was nice to see him in the pass catching drills as well. Um, the only He one ran a four three nine. Yeah, the And the dude is a tank. <laughs> well, when he ran a four four one, he was the fastest running back in the class. That was the unofficial time. Then the official time came in at four three nine even faster. Um yeah, he's up over two hundred and twenty pounds. He's got the most college production. And while he you know, is has not been a prolific pass catcher because that's just not the role of that college it was I mean he had a if he had 20 plus receptions that last year yeah and and you watched in the combine drills he looked good at that I mean the only uh, pass I can remember him not being there for was when he ran out of his shoe <laughs> he literally he goes to cut and that shoe was like I can't handle this and then uh, you know that's going to make it more difficult the big stories at the wide receiver position uh, Henry Ruggs was very, very fast. He was not the fastest man ever to be at the Combine, but he will be improving his draft stock. I mean, we already knew he was fast, but now you have the actual measurement. The big story, though, it seemed like people could not stop talking about Chase Claypool. Was, like The story was, he's so big. Does, is he going to have to move over to be a tight end? And then he comes out and he has... Uh, what people are calling Calvin Johnson levels of athleticism. We're not calling him Calvin Johnson, so don't hear what, what we're not saying, but athletically a very, very gifted player who seems like really improved his draft stock, will be moving forward as a wide receiver. And Do you have any other wide receiver takeaways, Jay, or does you know, that seem about right? When I look at combine metrics for wide receivers, I just don't – I don't always buy in. Uh, I don't want to – you know, there's there's so much data out there. So much work is done on which metrics are sticky. It's nice to see a guy is fast or slow, but, uh, right. I, you know, I, I don't look too deep into the wide receiver combine metrics. Um, I will say that C.D. Lamb just looked like a beast. Like, right, like, yes, he did. Obviously, since college, he has been working out. Have you seen these – the like the protein shake things that are going around because I I can't remember the player who but they were like he had to put on a bunch of weight and so there's these weird weight gain shakes that they're talking about 
Mm-mm. They, they like, I haven't seen them, but it's I think disgusting. Yahoo, like Yahoo made one where it was like seven eggs, a whole bunch of peanut butter, some Gatorade. <laughs> it was like this is what people are drinking. That's just not fair. Just head down to Mickey D's. You want to put some weight? <laughs> I mean. I can you put, probably have some real good tips. I have some tips. Any wide receivers out there that want to put on some weight, uh, you can contact me at JasonFFL on Twitter. Slide into my DMs. I promise I can get you some LBs quick, efficiently. If that's going to help your draft stock, I'm here for you. Oh. And, and vice versa, if anybody has pro tips, maybe some shakes on losing LBs. <laughs> Uh, I could use your help. <laughs> All right. Before we get into the free agency <laughs> preview, want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Man, you know we've been talking about Manscaped for quite some time now. No more cuts, no more nicks, but the new and improved Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. They had to take the ride to the next level. This is the third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology. Keeping your bad boys nice and smooth. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting it. The battery is going to last up to 90 minutes. So no no more worrying about charging all the time. It's got an LED light. Because in case you're in the dark, I I suppose. Absolutely. Look, I've we all have Manscaped products. I have many friends who have come up to me and they said, no, really, Mike, the I heard you talking about the lawnmower. I'm like, but do you use it? I'm like, it's it's legit. Yeah. Like, I'm not, not only gonna... are you a member, you're also the president. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> right now, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. You use the code footballers. Your downstairs is going to thank you. Free agent frenzy. So before we get into the free ages, we wanted to take uh, just a couple quick seconds, kind of educate people on some of these terms. We kind of take them for granted when we're talking about contracts, we're talking about money, and we know not everyone gets to just sit around and, and think about football all day. And we've had some people reaching out, say, you know, explain what's going on. And they want it's like things like dead money, uh, cap hit. So, so those types of things. So, Jay, I'm going to cede the floor to you because I feel like so you, I just you'll have to do all of it. You're going to explain it the best of just, all of us. I'm going to explain it so eloquently. I'll blow your minds. You're going to be like, now I have let, I thought I knew what it was, and now I have no idea what it is. So, <laughs> uh, look, the cap hit. Wait, wait. You're, that's backwards. R- that's right. That's right. Well, you put it to me. So this is this is who I am. Um, look, a cap hit, if you're talking about a player's cap hit, that is not necessarily how much that player is making this year. That's all. That's how much they cost against cap. It's the easiest way to look at it. And the, and the salary cap, so I will help you, though. Yes, the sir. salary cap, every single team has a maximum amount of money they are allowed to spend. And you're it, like other leagues, you can go over, like the NBA, you just pay a tax. And I think you start paying like double. For for every dollar you go over the luxury tax, you have to pay double. And I believe the Yankees, the more they pay, the more they get paid. Yes, it's just something like that. A loophole. But the NFL doesn't work like that. The NFL has to approve all contracts, and so I mean you have to be under the cap. This is just how the NFL works. Yes, um, dead money is money that has been guaranteed to a player who is basically not on the team anymore. If you cut them or trade them, they're not there anymore. That's considered dead money. That goes against the cap. Uh, A lot of good examples here. I mean, the Arizona Cardinals last year had a major cap hit. Who who was the – they were still paying for – What, like Bradford? Yeah, I think it was Sam Bradford was still owed money last year. That usually shows up because you give a a player a very large signing bonus. And then they're not on the team. And we talk about, like, David Johnson, good friend of the show, but the Cardinals – they can't really do anything with him because he will cost the team so much towards their salary cap for a player that won't be on the team. So they have to be very creative with, with what they're going to do. Yeah. An unrestricted free agent means that player is free to sign wherever they want to. They have fulfilled the, the, the yearly quota that they have to hit. They're single and ready to mingle. Exactly. I mean, they're completely open. There's no... There's there's no one, you know, you're not going to find out later like, "Oh, what? Yeah. Who's who's this who's this girl? 
No, they're completely on the market available. Right. Restricted free agent means the player can sign an offer sheet with any team, but the original team is allowed to match it. They can all, uh, also put on tenders. So an example for that will be like Austin Eckler. I expect the Los, the Los Angeles Chargers to go after him. He's restricted, which means they can put like a second round tender on this player, which means that which, Eckler will earn a certain amount of money. Or another team can come and get him. But that means that the team that's going to come and try to pay him a bigger salary, if they take him, they also have to give a second round that is correct. pick to that team. It, most of the time when someone is tendered at a high level, they stay with that team. Correct. And, and then, then the exclusive rights free agent. Not a free agent. Which is... <laughs> this is Man. This is the This dumb is a bad... Bad beat. Yeah, that last uh, CBA that you did, you, you you did you did them wrong for the exclusive rights free agents. So this is this usually applies to guys who were uh, cheap and undrafted, like undrafted free agents. Exactly. Yeah. But basically, what this means is that if the team wants them, they say uh, you're still on our team. Yeah. And then the, and then they're still on the team. If the team doesn't <laughs> want them, they say, hey, good news, you're a free agent. That's what it means. So they're not a free agent at all. All right, let's talk about the quarterbacks. The big ones, the big fish, Dak Prescott is the largest fish of the quarterback free agents. But he's not alone. This is the biggest year of quarterback free agency in modern NFL history. I, I mean, there's... That's there, bold. But it's not even... It, I mean, it's it's bold that it's happening, but it's not a stretch at all because usually there are no quarterbacks on the market. I mean, when Kirk Cousins was on the market, it was this huge deal. Right, and he had to just to get to that point. He had to go through two different franchise tags. Yeah, because good quarterbacks are not available. <laughs> You're gonna want to go to YouTube. And I would say what, what bolsters your case is the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady, is actually a free agent. So, but before we get to Tom Brady, let's go to Dak. Do we expect any transition from Dak, or he just he's going back to Dallas for me? Dak is the easiest one to talk about because he's not going anywhere. He's a cowboy. They're not going to let him go away. The only way in the world that Dak would go anywhere is if you know some crazy sideways thing happens and Tom Brady becomes a, a a cowboy, and that's what Jerry Jones wants, which is not going to happen. Jameis Winston. Now I have been on the the side of Jameis Winston will return to Tampa Bay. It's going to be great for fantasy. He will continue to throw lots of touchdowns and lots of interceptions. Things have kind of started to trend, like the stench, the whispers from the bushes have gotten a little bit louder that the team wants to move on. I still choose to believe this is a leverage play by the team, trying to make him take a little bit less money. So I'm still going with Jameis Winston. We'll be back in Tampa Bay, have you been swayed by the Peter Kings of the world? Uh, I don't listen to the Peter Kings of the world, but, um, you know, I, it, I, there's, there's a, a real realistic uh, path to Jameis Winston not being a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, and that really is entirely up to Tampa Bay. I don't think there are teams clamoring over themselves to get Jameis Winston, but it is, it, it's also not without you know, the realm of possibility that a team makes a push for him. You know, if if you're the Chargers and you've got a good wide receiving core and you've lost your long time or parted amicably with Phillip Rivers, Jameis is still very young, uh, has had a very successful – Has Rivers ever parted amicably with anyone? I think with the Chargers, right? That's Th what they're saying. They're, well, I mean, that's the best you can do. All right, I'm just, just trying to – figure it out trying to get a was, you think it was messy behind the scenes probably I think someone threw some food at someone I mean if if you're Phil Rivers and you're still like I'm still playing football it's gonna be a little bit of a rough break, breakup like Tom Brady if Tom Brady ends up on another team that breakup is bad with New England you know, I think about that because it's that's like, that's like really, really bad. But he's if if let's say he's uh, he goes and signs with the Titans, right. as I've been saying forever. Um, if he were to go to Foxborough and play as a Titan, he will get cheered. He will not be booed. Wow. I mean, it, if Tom Brady goes back to Foxborough in a different uniform, yeah. will he be cheered or booed? What is your opinion? I think they're. 
I think that it would be a smattering of both. I'm going to I'm going to say that the cheering will outperform the booing, but he will definitely be booed by at least 30% of the I stadium. Mean, you know, it's one thing if you're like when LeBron left Cleveland yeah. and but and he was a great player, but he hadn't done you know, for Cleveland at that point the first time around uh what what they had hoped and but Tom Brady's brought six rings. You can't boo the guy. <laughs> he just But he just left you. Yeah. I don't know. Um, all right, so we're talking about Jameis. I think Jameis is back in Tampa Bay. I think they'll sign him okay. to a two-year deal, short-term uh, deal. And, and and then I think they will sign him to a longer-term deal because if he's back with Bruce Arians with good eyes. And, um, a, and a fixed shoulder. A fixed shoulder. And he's, Biloba, and he's got uh, AI. He's connected. He's absolutely. with the network. He is Skynet. I think, he'll, I think he'll do very well for Tampa Bay. Now, Andy is uh, unable to speak. But Andy has Jameis going to the Washington, Washington Redskins, Washington, which who just drafted Dwayne Haskins. So this must be a backup quarterback situation. Um, the only thing I will say to this is there is a new head coach in town who did not draft Haskins, and sometimes that you know with that loyalty not being there, if he comes in and says, "All right, let's take a look at the team," and I'm not positive that Haskins is the guy, maybe, but I, that. That one shocked me when I looked at that. And uh, the nice thing is I can say, man, what a what a dumb call. He can't defend himself. <laughs> He's right here. Can't defend himself. Can't say anything. Oh, that is correct. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill. He will be back in Tennessee. Jason's sticking strong with this. Tom Brady's going to end up in Tennessee for some reason. I've got him switching teams, Mike. Okay, wait. Okay. So Ryan Tannehill will be a Patriot. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that when, when Tom Brady signs with good old head coach Mike Vrabel, best friend, and plays for the Titans, then Ryan Tannehill is a very serviceable quarterback who could definitely do good things with the Patriots. I, I don't know. disagree with that. So but I'm just, <laughs> the, the the QB swap. Yeah, I mean, I, I look. It's it, a reality show. It should have a reality show, and I'm sure there will be plenty of behind the scenes on both of those teams, and we could turn it in after the fact to a reality show. Let's talk about running backs. Melvin Gordon. We kind of alluded to it uh, that he will not be back with the Los Angeles Chargers. He's going to head to free agency. He's going to try and get the bag. Unfortunately for Melvin Gordon. Perception is a bit of reality. He is not the hottest free agent at the running back position. That honor goes to King Henry, to Derrick Henry, unless I'm mistaken. No, are, are you with me? You're 100% not mistaken. Derrick Henry is the bell of the ball at running back. If a team is wanting to make their entire offense predicated on a running back, which is what you have to do if you're talking about paying one of these guys what they're asking – you have to make them a centerpiece. It's certainly Derrick Henry. Now, there are certain teams that might say, I prefer Melvin Gordon's skill set because he's a pass-catching right. running back as well, a, a true three-down player. That's not really Derrick Henry's forte. Um, Derrick Henry only needs two downs, Jason. That's why. You're, you're not wrong. I mean, <laughs> this last year seemed to work just fine. So, Melvin Gordon... Uh, there's been talks that uh, he could end up back with the Chargers, that he wants to be there and that they want him, which is just cr crazy to me. What? Who is, who is saying that, this? That's everywhere. I mean, you, I mean, the, that's ev I'm not hearing this. You have not heard that the, no. that the Chargers want to sign Melvin Gordon. And I've Melvin also, Gordon but I've been asleep for 48 straight hours. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I don't, I don't take it as much more than just simple responses to questions put on the T by reporters. You know, would you want Melvin Gordon back? Sure. Yeah. That sounds okay, great. That's, that's fair. Um, but the reality is you just had this whole cycle where you couldn't come to a, an agreement on a long-term contract already, same team, same player. A year later where he performs worse than previous, why would they come Ooh. to an agreement now unless Gordon's they, just willing to take less money? They drove down his value. Yeah, they, they had a plan. <laughs> they had a master plan to save money. So where do you have Melvin Gordon going? I have Mike? Melvin Gordon going to Houston. I think that the Houston Texans are – and it's a sensational spot for, for fantasy value. Melvin Gordon in Houston – 
becomes very, very interesting. High-powered offense. They don't necessarily throw to the running back all that much, but Carlos Hyde was able to have a resurgence. I mean, he rose from the ashes like a phoenix. Nobody wanted Carlos Hyde. It was He went to Kansas City. It seemed like, uh-oh, all the Damian Williams owners were freaking out about Carlos Hyde, who got cut. And then, I mean, he just ends up down in Houston. So I, I think Melvin Gordon goes there. Well, I'll be interested in drafting him. If he's if he's a, a Texan, running back what? Uh, I I think he can be a low-end one. So for fantasy, Houston. you're saying a running back yeah. 10 through 12. Yeah, 10, 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Well, like 10, a- 10 to 30-ish. Oh, okay. Bold, <laughs> bold take there. I'm here to be accurate. Yeah. Um, I have Melvin Gordon, much to my chagrin. Oh, no. Going to a team who was rumored to be interested in him in the trading market last year has plenty of uh, money, I believe, can make poor decisions, as in paying a running back a lot of money, desperately wants to be a team that runs the ball more and hasn't been able to do it because the guy they brought in to be their main running back who is awesome has been injured carry on johnson carry on my wayward son i think melvin gordon has a realistic shot ending up in detroit which would suck for fantasy it would suck for melvin gordon yes it would suck for carry on johnson it is i'm pretty upset that you're even speaking this into existence yeah i i don't want it to happen this is um not where i want him to go andy kind of agrees with me he has him going to detroit as well but in the notes it says or houston or tampa bay or washington so if melvin gordon doesn't end up on one of those teams andy you you took the shotgun approach and still missed if if uh, he re-signs with the chargers but you you've got a pretty good list there of teams who have the money and want a running back. I'm also just realizing now that in our league of record where we have to put – we have our franchise player that we get to keep, and then we get to fill a pool of three players. Mm-hmm. Randomly, two of those people will be selected. And they Go, can't be the same position as the franchise player. Right. But heading into the offseason, I thought, you know, I've got a lot of running backs here. I can fill up the pool. It's going to be great. Two of those players would be Melvin Gordon and Carrion Johnson. Oh! Oh, so man, that would My suck. keepers will get kicked right in the gooch. <laughs> oh, man. That like would. Like big toe first. Well, at least there's a bright spot uh, if he – because I don't What's want him that? to go to Detroit. No, the bright spot oh. is that your team gets trashed. <laughs> and that makes me very happy because I am not your team. I, I am your opponent. Kenyon Drake, he came over from the Miami Dolphins. He was hot fire for the Arizona Cardinals. He had the fourth highest yards per touch among running backs through the first five seasons in the league. Kenyon Drake, extremely talented, keeps getting buried by teams. Now, he was finally freed by Arizona. We really saw what he got to do. But 26 years old, he's a very interesting free agent at the running back position. I have him going to Atlanta. I am buying in that the Falcons are going to Release Devonta Freeman. They're going to get him off the books. They need kind of like a high-profile running back to make that offense really work. Kenyon Drake has the skill set that Matt Ryan needs, which is he can be a two-down runner. He can also catch the ball. We disagree where Kenyon Drake is going to land. Yeah, I think he does come back to Arizona. Now, he is an unrestricted free agent. He can go anywhere he wants, and if any team wants to pay up based on what he has shown through these first five seasons, especially the second half of this year with Arizona, uh, then then certainly someone could outbid them. But this is really um, based upon my belief that Steve Kime is going to make the wrong decision for the Arizona Cardinals, their g- general manager. Steve Kime uh, already kind of made the wrong decision, I believe, in trading away, what was it, a fifth-round pick for Kenyon Drake for a couple of games. Sounds right. And then he was going to become an unrestricted free agent. So they rented on a bad team that was not playoff bound. They gave away an important draft pick to rent a running back for a few games, and then he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Steve Keim, I think, is going to double down and want to prove that he was correct to bring him in-house, pay the man a lot of money, 
um, whether or not they're able to get rid of David Johnson. Um, and while I don't like, as an Arizona Cardinal fan, I don't like spending all of that money on running back. We, you know, they do have a lot of cap room, and the team has said they want him. He said he wants to be here. The way that Cliff Kingsbury talks about Kenyon Drake is that he is the perfect fit for this offense, and he to be fair, he was the perfect fit for this yes. offense. He did the, prove that. Yeah, I mean, and you know, so I I believe he's he is back with Arizona. Now, and for he some context, with me. David Johnson, it will be the second highest cap hit on Arizona's books this year. Yeah, he will have the third highest hit at the, at the cap hit at the running back position. So, bringing in Kenyon Drake, who reportedly wants at least ten million dollars oh a gosh. year, that I mean, Kenyon Drake's Kenyon Drake will get a, f a fair amount of money. He's not going to get like Zeke or Todd Gurley money, but Kenyon Drake will find a team. Can you really, as a franchise, have a running back counting as $14 million against your books this year and then bring in another guy who would count for, let's say, eight? eight? Oh, no, you can't. $22 million invested in two running backs? But I would say that there is a way. There is a way that teams get the number one pick overall in the draft, like the Cardinals had two years ago, and it's by making poor decisions. So we'll we'll see. Um, hopefully, I mean, I don't even know what I want to have happen, both from a fantasy perspective, a fan perspective, because Kenyon Drake, I believe, is great for fantasy. And if he got the role in Arizona, or if a team pays up, right? If a team goes out and gives him more than ten million a year annually, they're going to give him the ball. So you know, what team? If, if he were to go to Houston, if right? he were to go, what? Well, no, let, let, let's take my landing spot. My my spot was great, Atlanta. Okay. Kenyon Drake, Atlanta Falcons, he's getting $8 million a year. I will be very interested in, in him for this season, uh, assuming that they cut Devonta Freeman, which I think they would have to in order to make that move. Yeah, I agree. At the wide receiver position, Amari Cooper and A.J. Green, depending on how you have them ordered, they would be the two most sought-after fellas at the position. A.J. Green, all three of us have him going back to Cincinnati. We're all bought in that – the, the Bengals are going to franchise him. So there's not a lot of discussion to be had there. Amari Cooper, though, Jason and I have different landing spots. I think he ends up back in Dallas. Jerry Jones doesn't like to lose. And I'm going, I'm traveling down Narrative Street, and the shops are nice. That's fine. But Jerry Jones doesn't want to lose, and that means paying Amari Cooper a lot of money. And they're going to, if they franchise Dak, then they're just going to have to open up the checkbook and say, Amari Cooper, don't even go look at other teams. And I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I would guess. Uh, I haven't looked this up for uh, Amari Cooper, but I would guess that the NFL odds, uh, the, the Vegas odds of landing It has to be spot, very heavy for Dallas. Yeah, I would assume that Dallas is the front runner. Um, but since they can't use the franchise tag – and Amari Cooper is, you know, at the wide receiver position, assuming A.J. Green is franchised, he is the clear bell of the ball. After him, there it really isn't a lot another, of bells at this ball. Well, at, uh, you know, one bell per position, you know, and then you and then a afterwards you're going to say take all the bells together and say who's who's the, the beauty. Oh, very nice. You're talking about bells. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, but the thing is, is. Uh, after Amari Cooper, it drops off a cliff. I mean, who's the next best? Robbie Anderson? Yeah. So there's a lot of teams out there that need a, a wide receiver desperately. I have him moving in division to the Washington Redskins. Whenever you have a new quarterback, the NFL teams are desperate to get them weapons. You know, you, you whenever, you know, every single team that has a second year quarterback, look at, you know, uh, you know you've got a young guy. The, the franchise wants to help ensure their success, and that takes a wide receiver one. I think Washington has the cap space, the need, and you know the ability to offer him a massive contract that Dallas just can't hang with uh, because of the Dak and Zeke money that's tied up. See, what I, what I do like about this analysis is on our dynasty league, or in our dynasty league, I have Terry McLaurin. So... It's it's great because Washington already has a wide receiver one. So them bringing in like a wide receiver two, that'll be sensational. I like it. 
Yeah. Because I'm not scared of Amari Cooper. Wide receiver, too. Going to get paid $20 million a year to show up for half of the games. Get out of here. Robbie Anderson, speaking of showing up for like three of the games every single year, just enough to uh, have a little bit of drool run out your mouth of what could possibly be with Robbie Anderson. I'm sending Robbie Anderson. I've, I've seen some other people talk about it. I agree. We alluded that Green Bay is going to upgrade their weapons. I think they start right away, right in free agency, and they bring in Robbie Anderson. He's still young. I'm sending him to the Green Bay Packers. Devontae Adams and Robbie Anderson with Aaron Rodgers. That's how you assure that you can sell that he is not a not not a top ten well worded fantasy quarterback. I like Blaine that Brooks. No, I, I I like that a lot. I do think Green Bay is going to go out and try to make a move. But what we have seen is that this as a team is they're so focused on their defense uh, on the running game. I you know I'm not a hundred percent sure that they're going to go out and spend big money for essentially the next best free agent option. Uh, I don't think it has to be huge money. I, I mean, think it's going to take a lot of money to get Robbie Anderson. I could be wrong. The team that I've got him going to is uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. And that one makes a lot of sense as well. They've talked about getting younger um, as, as a team. They need weapons at wide receiver. Alshon Jeffrey is now a grandfather. <laughs> um, you know, Nelson Agu I really hope that that's not true. Uh, I, I have not vetted that. I made that up as a joke. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I really hope that he is a proud grandfather now. Um, well, I mean, he is like, what, 43? He, uh, 47. Um, so some grandfathers can be that young. But look, he's not Just getting... turned 30 years old this <laughs> Just turned February. 30 years old. You shut your mouth, Brooks. 30 going on 47. This bit is gold. Yeah, I mean, look, the people get it. He's, he's <laughs> slowing down. Alshon's fine. But he, uh, he needs. He's got the body of a like a fifty-two year old. He needs help. That thing's breaking down. Uh, I mean, speaking of a body breaking down for an older wide receiver, not Alshon. We're talking about Deshaun Jackson, right? Also an Eagle. They need to replace that speed. You saw it when Carson Wentz did not have a downfield uh, option. He was not as good as he was week one when he had that. So I've got him going there, and I love where Andy has Robbie Anderson going. It makes complete sense to me. Oakland tried to do this last year. They went out and they signed Antonio Brown. They signed Tyrell Williams. Uh, or I shouldn't say Oakland now. Las Vegas. Oh, yes. You know, Robbie also has a little bit of baggage, um, which historically as a He French, seems like a Raider. He does seem like a Raider. Like, Raider. That being said, Mike Mayock as general manager has focused with the sole exception of Antonio Brown of bringing in extremely like the the whole yeah, this whole last draft they pounded the the high character guys uh and i'm not sure that robbie anderson would generally speaking fall into that category on someone's free agency board did you catch the video frank caliendo the, uh, the guy who does all the impressions the yeah. great impressions does a gruden oh he does a great gruden. did you see the video he was out with john gruden at an Aerosmith concert, and you didn't know he was there. Like it's John Gruden filming a selfie video and it, doing his in his John Gruden voice, talking about how he's at this concert. And he says, "What do you think of this?" And then he passes it to Gruden. It is wow. captivating. I I have to. I've only, the the recent one I thought you were going to talk about was Caliendo doing John Gruden brushing his teeth. Have you seen that video? <laughs> is that the one where he's got like the does something with his ring? It's great. It's it's Caliendo is on fire these days. If you're not following him, it's, there's some free pub for Frank Caliendo. Uh is there any other like any Look, other wide receivers you really so want to talk about? I, I think this is worth bringing up because this is kind of to prep people on the 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 position, right? There's not that many other options. There's Emmanuel Sanders who looks like he's probably going to re-sign with San Francisco and he's got him going to New England. But then, I mean, that's, here that's, that's like that's perfect, right? The the older it is perfect. He'll go there and then he'll retire. Yeah, he won't play. Um, he won't make it through training camp. You've got Brashad Perryman. Now, can Brashad Perryman be this year's Devonte Parker? Year five breakout. It's given no. us basically no. nothing. No. no, no, he gave us. Some really great. Do you remember how good he was? Yeah, he was the wide wide receiver three over the final five games because he had some monster performance. Eighty-seven, five for eighty-seven, three for seventy with a touchdown, 
Five for 113 with three touchdowns. Seven for 102. Five for 134 and a touchdown. Okay, I didn't remember how. He good. was freaking awesome. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know he. It was a product. He was a byproduct of so, a scenario. But wait a minute. Is some team gonna pay up for? Yes, Perryman's gonna make money. Oh my goodness! And One of these teams <laughs> is gonna regret a contract given to Brashad Perryman. That is my official. Where Where is Brashad Perryman gonna go? My official answer is to a team that will regret it. I am year just, one. I, I'm. Just so pleased with what happened with Brashad Perryman. He was on Cleveland. Was that where he was? Like he was Cle on a, Cleveland. He was no I'm Arizona. Saying, no, he was on a different team, and then they released him. Yes, like he said, I don't. I've changed my mind. I don't want to be here. And then he went to Tampa Bay, and goes and has this stretch of games. When like, was he on Arizona? Wasn't that this season? What? Like early? What camp? are you talking about? Oh, I'm thinking of Kevin White. Yes, yes, <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. The, uh, no, the same draft class. The same draft class, bust, same guy. Yeah. Just high draft capital yep. bust that never got it going. That's no, right. but seriously, Brashad Perryman, if he gets a contract, I'm going to be so happy for him. I will be happy for him, but not for the fan base. Um, he, other, other. He can do it. He proved it. I mean, but numbers with Jameis in that system, if all you're saying is just total counting numbers – yeah. People can put up a large sum of numbers in that offense without being great. Um, Evans and Goblin were injured during that stretch, and there's so many yards throw, being thrown in that system, someone's got to get it. Other wide receivers available, they're not great. Demarcus Robinson, Rashad Higgins, Devin Funches, Geronimo Allison, Randall Cobb, Nelson Aguilar, yeah. <laughs> Philip Dorsett. Is any one of them a, uh, someone that you'd say, like, you're an Arizona Cardinals fan. They need wide receiver help. Anybody on that list that you'd say, you know, I would really be happy if we snagged. I would take Robinson because, Robinson because he's so crazy fast. Like Robinson could fit into what Arizona needs to do. At the tight end position, it's actually pretty loaded. Hunter Henry, Austin Hooper, Eric Ebron, the fallen warrior Tyler Eifert, if oh, we want to talk man. about him. Just joking. But Hunter Henry, Austin Hooper – I mean, that's those are big names. Those are players who have produced. Those are players who have been awesome when they're on the field. Hunter Henry has been great when he's on the field. He brings that baggage of oft injured. So where do you think Hunter Henry is going to end up? I will let you. Now, I'm looking at the doc, Jason. Yeah. Because you have a team that's not the Chargers. That's right. We reported earlier in the show that – it is really heating up that the Chargers are going to franchise Hunter Henry. Yes. I'm going to let you change your answer if you want to. Well, my answer is half a wishing well. Because I, <laughs> okay. I do think that the uh, Chargers realistically can end up franchising Hunter Henry, and then he'll be back I think they them. will. Uh, the, the team that I had him going to prior to that news coming out recently was – uh, the Indianapolis Colts. Now, is that because you thought Andrew Luck would unretire? No, it's because Philip Rivers, I've got going to the Colts. So if Philip Rivers and Hunter Henry went together for a team that uses the tight end position so much, is clearly not going to bring back Eric Ebron, who is an unrestricted free agent. I think they would upgrade that position, and they would make a run at him, but obviously you can't do that if he's franchised. Speaking of Eric Ebron, is there anywhere that Eric Ebron can go in the NFL – that you will not be excited. Oh, <laughs> you you switched it on me there. I'm all nodding yes. Is there anywhere he could go where the I resident would not Eric Ebron truther on excited. this show? Mm. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Nope. Okay. Where do you have him going? Uh, Eric Ebron, I think, will go to Green Bay. I think uh, Green Bay is going to try to get Hunter Henry, try to get Austin Hooper, not be willing to pay enough to get either. And they're going to take the leftovers of a good quality pass catching tight end. Um, and Eric Ebron will go there. And then there will be the annual debate of, uh, you know, of a Aaron Rodgers doesn't use the tight end versus Aaron Rodgers has never had tight end talent. Uh, that debate is. And I will continue to stay on the side of Aaron Rodgers will not throw to his tight end, especially if it's Eric Ebron. Sure, maybe, and I will continue to be on the side that Eric <laughs> Ebron is good and just Eric like Eric Ebron got, is great. He's just on his like fifth team now. I'm not saying team, <laughs> he 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 was he was too vocal for Frank Reich. He wanted the ball too much. They were not happy with one another, and they are parting 
not amicably. They are they are like I you you cheated on me. <laughs> you cheated on me. I'm out of here. That's how it feels. Okay. Austin Hooper. He oh, is, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I want to go back to Hunter Henry because we didn't say Andy's answer, which I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, uh, the same caveat, I'll bet he believes that the Chargers at this point might franchise tag right. him. But the team he had going to, New England, the Patriots, take over that Gronk role as every tight end that goes there, you know, the narrative of he's the new he's the new Gronk. Hunt, I will say this. Of the players who have gone to New England where we've tried to get excited about them replacing Gronk, Hunter Henry could do it. Hunter Henry is a beast, and he blocks well, and he's a great pass-catching tight end. So of the options where we've floated it out there, Hunter Henry would at least be exciting. Austin Hooper is going to hit free agency, the team reporting that they're going to let him test the market. Generally speaking, means they don't want to pay him the monies. They can't. I mean, their cap situation is a little bit rough. Well, because if- they're signing Kenyon Drake. Oh, uh, that big money contract. <laughs> and if they if they were to pay big money to him, which I think Hooper's going to command, that would just be difficult for them as a team. I've got him going the same place, the Wishing Well, a couple episodes ago. I brought up Chicago. Immediately after that episode, the news came out that Chicago's interested in Hooper. I think it makes They're sense. also interested in someone else. Because I think you're – who was your combo? You had a Wishing Well combo because you wanted a quarterback to go there. Oh, yes, Andy Dalton – and uh, Austin Hooper, or preferably even Ryan Tannehill. Do you, there are rumors that the Bears are interested in Andy Dalton. Fantastic. <laughs> well, look at that. I think they listened to the yes. Wishing Well episode and went, that's not you know, a bad that's, idea. This Jason uh, Ron to something. Austin Hooper and Andy Dalton, we should go after them guys. I don't know why they're from down south, <laughs> but what can you do? Uh, uh, so where do you have Austin I've Hooper I've got going? Austin Hooper going to Pittsburgh. I think they're going to have to move on, regrettably, from the Vance dance. The the, the Vance dance is dangerous. That's, mm. This is what we have learned. You can get arrested. <laughs> you can get arrested. You can get injured. You can get fined. I mean, lots of really bad things can happen when you're doing the Vance dance. So I think that they're going to move on, and Austin Hooper, uh, get a young tight end in there. He would work out great for that it, like you add austin hooper you know, hooper juju and deontay there with big ben that that team becomes very very interesting real quick on, on the offensive side of the ball do you have anybody else you want to talk about before we close out the show um not really uh, andy has austin hooper going to green bay some of these tight end yeah, like, hungry teams so andy has hooper going to green bay and has ebron going to chicago mm-hmm. you have Ebron going to Green Bay mm-hmm. and Hooper going to Chicago. That is correct. You're going to just get a little crossfire situation. That's right. Crossfire! <laughs> Thank you for joining the show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you had a lovely Tuesday. You know what? I am because it's my birthday. Happy birthday to, to you. me. Thank you for tuning into the show. Make sure you follow us on all the socials Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Join us Thursday for another episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Andy might be back. Who knows? Hopefully not. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.